Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how I convert this switch that is currently controlling this outlet down here into a switch that will operate some new recessed lighting I'm about to install on the ceiling in this room. So stick with me and I'll walk you through the process. Okay, so before we get started, this video will not touch on the actual installation of the recessed light. Uh, if you want some more information about installing recessed lighting, I have another video on my channel. I'll put a link to it right here. You could click that, and that'll walk you through that entire process. So, our problem we have right now is that this box right here with the switches lacks a neutral wire. I'm going to show you why that is and how we can go about fixing that so we can get this to work for our project. Alright guys, so first step, I went ahead down to the panel and I shut power off to the circuit. So we could work on it safely. I then went ahead and took the covers off both the outlet and the switch and then pulled both of them out of the boxes so we could have a better look at the wiring and what we have to do to modify it to supply power to our new lights. Okay, so what exactly is the problem right now with the current configuration of this circuit? What we have right now is a single piece of Romex that is coming out of that outlet box down there. Now, the way this works now is that this switch, when it's off or on, is controlling power down to that outlet. There isn't any lighting in the ceiling in here and current code requires that a switch be placed in every room in your house that could control either lighting in the ceiling or in our case an outlet. So the idea is that you'd have a lamp plugged into that outlet down there and then the switch would function as a means of providing light in the room. Shortcut that has taken a lot of times, it's not really a shortcut, it's a common way of doing it because it saves wire, is that they'll run a single piece of Romex between both these locations when you have this set up. And what they then do is they'll supply 120 volts from that outlet box up to this switch. And then depending on the location of the switch, if it's off or on, it'll then either be supplying or not supplying power down the other wire in that Romex back down to that outlet. So even though you, you see a, a white wire in this box right now, that white wire isn't representing a neutral. Technically speaking, it was a poor job by the electrician that wired this house because he was required by code to indicate that this is no longer a neutral by putting a black piece of electrical tape on here or some type of label. So unknowingly, someone that doesn't have that much knowledge about electric can come in here and think this is a neutral when in fact, when this switch is either off or on, there could be 120 volts present on it. So uh, that's something you always want to do if you start using any other conductors in your wire for hots other than the black, you have to indicate that with tape. Or like I said, a label. Alright guys, so we're taking a look at the junction box right now at the outlet. And hopefully I can explain this a little better to you right now on how this is currently wired and what we're going to do to change it to make it work for our new lights. Alright, so as you can see here, here's our outlet, right? And then we have this wire nut over here that has two blacks coming in and also a white. Alright, and what they basically did was these two black wires come into this box. One of these is bringing power into the box from the source. So this might be coming from the panel or it might be coming from another outlet somewhere in this circuit. Alright, so that brings power in to this box. The other black wire represents the uh, feed out of this box to the next device on the circuit. So more than likely this, this other black wire, depending on which one it is, is going out in the room to the next outlet on the circuit given that power. All right. Okay, the other wire under our wire nut is this white, which is again supplying 120 volts or the hot leg up to our switch right now. Now again, same scenario down here. The electrician should have indicated this is a hot wire now by wrapping a piece of electrical tape around here, a black piece of tape. So again, the unsuspecting eye might think that this is a neutral. It's not. This is a hot. As you can see right here, it's tied into the two blacks under this wire nut. All right, having a look at the outlet now, the hot side of the outlet, you can see there's only one wire coming in here. This black wire right now is in the same piece of Romex or the same sheathing as this white. So the white, again, bringing power up to the switch and the black in that same piece of Romex is coming out and that's bringing power back down to the outlet depending on what location the switch is on, if it's off or on, which is why there's not another wire connected underneath this screw right here, okay? That's why all the other hots are under the wire nut. This outlet is solely controlled by that switch. Okay, if we flip this outlet around and have a look at the neutral side of it, we have two white wires. Now one is the neutral supply to the outlet, and we have a neutral coming out, which is feeding the next device on this circuit, which more than likely is probably another outlet. Uh, you also see the ground over here. We're really not going to be changing anything with this in terms of this circuit. This is uh, going to stay as is. Alright, so rotating this back around here now. What do we have to do 
to supply the switch with a neutral and a hot to feed our new lights. The first thing we're going to do, and again, as I stated in the beginning of this video, all this this power is off to the circuit right now, so we have no risk of shock working on this, all right? Because we're going to take this wire nut off. We're going to separate the white out of this nut, and we're going to keep the two blacks together. What we're then going to do is we're going to take that white, and it's going to be connected to the whites on the side of the outlet here. Doesn't matter which one. And what that'll then do is bring a neutral up to our box. Now, you really don't want to be connecting more than two wires to the side of this outlet here, okay? It's just not good practice. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take these two neutrals off and we're also going to take our new neutral that is currently a hot off this and we're going to connect those all together under a wire nut similar to this right now, okay? We're going to add a fourth wire to that and basically what the fourth wire is going to be is a jumper from that wire nut over to this outlet to give us a neutral here. All right, and what that's going to do is going to clean everything up on this outlet and will basically be a better way to secure all the cabling in the back of this box here and making sure we don't have any issues down the road. All right, what we're then going to do is very similar to the neutrals. We're going to take our two hots and the current hot that is the return from the switch right now. And we're going to connect all three of those together under this wire nut and also provide a jumper from this wire nut over to this outlet to give this outlet 120 volts. So basically the neutral leg and the hot leg in this box are going to look pretty much the same. They're going to have four wires on each of the wire nuts with one wire coming out to this outlet. All right, so what we basically then just did was kill two birds with one stone. We supplied a hot and a neutral up to our switch for our new lighting circuit. And we also supplied constant 120 volt power to this outlet. So this outlet will no longer be controlled by the switch. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys all this, how it's gonna look when I'm done. But again, I just wanted to go through how we're gonna be doing these changes. Uh, I'll show you the changes up in the box as well when I run the new wire down there for the lights. And it all should be good when we're done. Okay guys, I figured I'd speed the footage up here a little bit just to keep the video moving along. Uh, I'm using a voltage sniffer here to verify that the voltage is in fact off, better safe than sorry. Uh, remove the wire nut and what we're going to do now is just separate all the hot conductors as they are uh, currently configured. Here I'm just cutting off the um, wires off the back of the outlet. The electrician originally used those stair block connectors, which I really don't like, so we're not going to use them again. We'll remove the pieces later. Uh, just showing you that the ground uh, isn't going to be changed. We're going to keep that as is. And just trying to clean up the wires here a little bit. You, um, you always want to try to separate all your wires, meaning the whites and the blacks. You really don't want them crossing over each other. Just try to keep everything neat. And here I'm just cutting all the wires to the same length. Um, makes it a little bit easier when we go to strip all the uh, insulation off and tighten them together with the uh, wire dikes in a few seconds here. Um, when they're all different lengths, it just makes everything very difficult. Again, you want everything to be clean and neat when you're done so all the wires fold in nice. Okay, so here's the two pigtails I made, just two short pieces of wire. And what that's going to do is branch the wiring out from underneath the wire nuts in the back of the box over to the outlet to supply it power. Uh, this is good practice. Uh, what this prevents is if the outlet ever does fail, uh, you don't lose all the devices downstream of that outlet as well. Just the outlet will be offline. Okay, so what you want to do now is take your wire dikes and just twist all those wires together real well. You never want to solely rely on the wire nut itself to uh, to keep everything together. Um, just give everything a good twist. That way everything stays nice and secure. Uh, doing the same thing here now for the neutral side. So again, real simple here. We have just four hots and four neutrals in this box uh, all connected together. Um, and that basically will complete the circuit the way we need it to now. And here I'm just giving you a view of everything all done. Uh, obviously the wire nuts aren't on yet. We're going to get to that next. Okay, and there are those wire nuts going on. Just a general note here, you want to make sure you screw these on good and tight. You don't want any chance of them backing off. I'm going to go ahead now and trim the individual conductors to length. Same goes here. You want the, the wires to be relatively the same length and then strip off the insulation so it's easier to connect to the outlet. Uh, take your needle nose, put a nice J-hook on the end of both those wires. And uh, what I'm going to do here is remove those pieces of wire that is stuck in those stair block connectors. So you just need a small slotted screwdriver. You put them in the slots and the, all those little pieces will pop right out. 
Okay, so uh, black hot wire goes to the gold screw. The white neutral goes to the silver screw. Just make sure you put the wires under the screws the right way so that when you tighten the screw, it actually pulls the wire into the, uh, the connection. All right, so there's everything all wired, ready to go. Fold up your wires nicely and put them into the back of the box and just screw your outlet in place. Put your uh, cover plate back on and this outlet is good to go. Alright, so up here at the switch now, we're going to start preparing this for the rewire. Um, just ripping off some tape on the switch here. Uh, checking the power to make sure it is off. And uh, the switch was hooked up with those stair block connectors here as well. So what I'm doing is I'm just using the screwdriver again to remove the two wires. And we'll remove the screw and take the ground wire off as well. Uh, that white wire that you see coming into the box, the piece of Romex with the insulation still on it, that is the wire going up the wall to the new lights. So I'm going to go ahead and just strip that back now. Now I just wanted to note here, the original wires, the black and the white that you see on the top of the box right now, those are the wires coming from the outlet we just rewired. Alright, so I'm just going to separate everything out here now. I'm going to twist the two ground wires together and we'll go ahead and snip one of those wires off and that uh, individual ground wire now will go over to the new switch. Here I'm just cutting the conductors off again the same length to make it a little easier to twist everything together. Those two white wires now represent the neutral from the outlet and the neutral going up to the light so we're just going to twist those together and install a wire nut. Okay, same thing here, the two hots, I'm going to cut them to the same length and strip off the insulation. Now at this point I'm showing you the old switch. What you would have here is just a feed in and a feed out and then the ground. You can just connect those to the screws. I am however using a dimmer switch. Now dimmers come pre-wired with pigtails. Uh, same type of connection, it's just interrupting the hot leg. So one wire goes to the one black wire on the switch and the other black obviously goes to the other black. Uh, it doesn't matter which wire goes to which pigtail. All right, and then we're just gonna wire nut everything together. All right, and I'm gonna give you a close up here now of everything. So we have a hot coming in, a hot going out, our ground and our neutral pigtail. All right, fold everything nice and neat back into the box now. I'm going to go ahead and install the new dimmer switch, drive the screws into the box, put our new cover plate on. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the power back on to the circuit now that the wiring is complete. Uh, we're going to check to make sure everything works. Check the outlet, make sure we have 120 volts here. We're going to go ahead and try the lights. And uh, that's pretty much going to wrap up this installation. So if you found this video informative, I appreciate it if you give the like button a tap. If you got any questions or comments, post them down below. And I'll see you guys on the next one.